Hey everybody, welcome to episode 19 of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today I'll be discussing a medication known as naproxen. Its brand names are Aleve and Naproxen. One other medication you will see naproxen in is called Vimovo. This is a combination medication which contains naproxen as well as a proton pump inhibitor which protects your stomach, known as ezomeprazole. So naproxen falls into the same class of medication as Advil or ibuprofen. That is, it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It's usually used to treat mild or moderate pain in muscles, joints, bones, and as well it's commonly used in osteo and rheumatoid arthritis. It's available as a tablet as well as a suspension. In the tablet form, it's available as a 250 milligram tablet, 375 milligram, as well as 500 milligram. Now these tablets can be non-enteric coated, so just a regular tablet, or they can be enteric coated. So sometimes you'll see an EC on the prescription vial that does stand for enteric coated, which basically means it's a little bit easier on your stomach. Now there are some precautions that must be taken when this medication is prescribed or even purchased over the counter. So I'll share some of these precautions with you now. It should be used cautiously in patients who have ischemic heart disease. So this could be a heart attack, a history of a heart attack, uh, as well as chest pain, as well as a history of cerebrovascular disease. So this would be a stroke. Also, NSAIDs, such as naproxen, can promote sodium retention through a mechanism associated with your kidneys. So this could be a problem in people who have heart failure, as well as people who have increased blood pressure. Lastly, I'd just like to mention that frail or debilitated patients may handle side effects less well so for these individuals, the rule of thumb is usually to use the lowest possible effective dose for the shortest amount of time possible. Moving now from precautions to contraindications or reasons individuals would not be able to use naproxen. So it shouldn't be used in the third trimester of pregnancy. People who have severe uncontrolled heart failure should not use naproxen. It should be avoided in people who have an active ulcer or an active bleed somewhere along their GI tract. It should be avoided in people who have inflammatory bowel disease, severe liver impairment or active liver disease, as well as severe kidney impairment, so when the creatinine clearance is less than 30 mils per min. Now if somebody is using naproxen, the typical dosing that we do see is anywhere from 250 to 500 milligrams taken twice daily. Occasionally people will split the 250 milligram tablet to give a total dose of 125 milligrams twice a day. However, if somebody was to split a tablet, it's important not to split the ones that have the EC or the enteric coded notation uh, on the vial. Now, this medication can be taken with or without food. However, the recommendation is usually to take it after a meal because this helps make it easier on your stomach. It's important to realize as well that naproxen isn't a type of medication that's going to treat an active disease. It usually just treats symptoms, so that pain and swelling that you may be experiencing. It's also important to note that this medication only relieves symptoms such as pain and decreases inflammation as long as you're actually taking the medication. So if you're trying to relieve your symptoms or decrease swelling, it's important to use it consistently. Now, while this medication is being used, there are some side effects that individuals may experience throughout the course of therapy. All the side effects I'm gonna mention now seem to happen at a rate of three to 9%. These include, in terms of your gastrointestinal tract, heartburn, constipation, abdominal pain, as well as nausea may occur. In terms of your central nervous system, headache, dizziness, and drowsiness can sometimes happen. Some people may notice some itching on their skin. Moving now to your cardiovascular system, some people experience difficulty breathing, while others experience peripheral edema. Lastly, some people experience tinnitus, as well as, interestingly, an increase in thirst. That's all I have to say about naproxen. As always, keep in mind that this channel is to be used for information purposes only and not to be used as a source of recommendations for your personal health care. If you have any questions about the medication, just direct them towards your personal health care provider. If you think I'm providing valuable information and you'd like to see the channel grow, you can like the videos, share the videos, or subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's it for today. Take care.